Hello. Chronic subdural hematoma is one of the most common neurosurgical disorders and most of these cases warrant surgery. Today I will talk to you about the various causes of a chronic subdural hematoma and I will use one specific example to try and explain everything else. I'll use alcohol as an example. So we're looking at a chronic alcoholic patient and why he got a chronic subdural. And based on that, I will try and explain the different causes. The first would be a guy gets heavily drunk, falls somewhere, bangs his head on something, injures himself and there's a bleed inside the head. So alcoholism obviously leads to these imbalances and falls. So that's the primary cause. Second is, because of alcohol intoxication on a regular basis, the liver gets damaged and liver is responsible for production of a lot of factors which are responsible for proper coagulation of the blood. So it leads to something called as a coagulopathy. So any disorder in the blood which makes the blood more prone to bleeding could lead to a chronic subdural hematoma. So alcohol again plays a similar role in that. Plus any other blood disorder that the patient has could play a role in these bleeding disorders. Apart from that, even medications like aspirin, clopidogrel, warfarin, acetrome. So these could be antiplatelets, anticoagulants. So these are things which can again lead to chronic subdurals if firstly they are misused, if they are not used under constant medical scrutiny that's one apart from that even a small trauma makes them more prone to oozing and bleeding leading to chronic subdural hematoma similarly an alcoholic with a liver disease yes there is a coagulopathy and they're also prone to it so that's the second cause third would be an alcoholic who's been consuming alcohol for a long long time tends to have atrophy of the brain that is shrinkage of the brain so that is another cause that we see in the alcoholics but yes, even in normal individuals, as we age, there is a shrinkage of the brain vis-a-vis -vis the skull. The skull is the skull volume remains constant while your brain trends to atrophy, leaving behind some space between the two. So even an old patient similarly would be more prone to chronic subdural hematoma. Any fall, there is a small bleed or a rupture of a vein a small artery and then the blood collects over there gradually over a period of time it grows it's called a chronic subdural hematoma because as i explained to you previously the blood gradually collects over there so at the time of the initial injury the initial bleed the scans at times could be bang normal or there could be a thin film of blood underneath the dura but over a period of time this blood gradually absorbs a CSF around that, gradually absorbs some ooze of blood around that and starts growing in size. At some point, it acquires a membrane around that, which could again be vascular, which also bleeds. So there is a, a particular pathophysiology which finally leads to the formation of a large chronic subdural hematoma, which starts creating pressure inside the skull on the brain, which finally requires surgical intervention for removal or drainage of this blood so that the pressure on the brain is relieved. So that's it. Using one example, I've tried to explain to you the whole gamut of reasons behind a chronic subdural hematoma. Thank you.